A serpent bit him. We overcame our greatest enemies. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Do you remember how big that was? How great that bear was that tried to overcome this country. And that bear is coming in a different way. Russia is, is, is more subtle than you'll ever believe. And they have something. Something that's going to cause all kinds of chaos. And they won't know how it happened. You know, I've never been an encourager of gloom and doom. I've always believed in encouraging people. And I've always believed that if we serve a God as big as what he is, that there is some redemption always, no matter how bad the situation is. I've listened to many prophets who I respect speak about judgment against America. And to a degree, I can sometimes agree that people bring judgment upon themselves. God doesn't initiate that in this time of grace. However, it does happen. Whenever there's an earthquake, people say it's a judgment of God. I disagree. Jesus has already said to us, told us, there will be rumors of war, wars. There will be earthquakes and famines. And this is a sign. Labor. Labor pain. What does that mean? Something is being born. If there's so much bigger out of this, why do we try and manipulate people by telling them that God constantly wants to judge them? That, that mindset, as I mentioned in my, my devotional there, is a, makes them conscious of God's judgment all the time. You say, well, that'll keep them straight. doesn't keep them straight. Some of you watching me right now, you say, Kim, you know, I've cried bitter tears hoping that I'd miss the judgment of God, but found myself going back to my sin. It's very sad that you would think that judgment will force somebody. It did work in the Old Testament, don't work today. What works today is God's message, God's word, God's presence, relevance, to bear upon, to be there. That's what makes the difference. And the fact is that if we're not there and we are not present to the moment, and we are not available to these people that suffer. And rather we are sitting on an island somewhere separated from them. Then we have done a great injustice to the kingdom of God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that we must be available to them. Shouting about earthquakes. To remember Elijah was right there in the middle of the famine at that time. And brought about redemption. He got rid of the prophets of Baal and rain came. Our, our duty is to get rid of the things that are standing in the way for God's blessing. Vision and betrayal are upon us. Upon us. What am I, am I saying both? Because the heavens are opened up and there is, there, there, there is a great prophetic revelation present. But there's also betrayal present. In Frederick Maryland, I prophesied there is a snake hidden in the capital. God says, I will bring it out. And this exposure shall cause the nation to shake. But God said the shaking is good for America. You're about to embark on a journey that you have never embarked upon before. And from the south of your land and throughout the middle of your country, from west and then back to south and east, north, they shall say this has never, ever happened before in our country and in our culture. On Thursday night, March the 25th, I was awakened. Thursday morning, excuse me, awakened early. I heard the Spirit of the Lord beckoning me to pray. During the following hour, I received a vision that shook me. I caught a glimpse of a long table. I knew it was in the White House. I saw a variety of clothing, uh, Western and Eastern, and I suddenly heard a voice saying, The hand of the betrayer is on the table. He does nothing. Nothing. Unless he reveals his secret to his servant, the prophet. Beginning in the, the March or the March of this year, for the decade of 2010, mountains will be taken. Kingdoms will be possessed. Demonic strongholds will be dispossessed. And a movement amongst children, 
likened unto Samuel shall begin to transpire. Once again, the great cloud of witness will hear the same sound that they heard. That's right. They hear the sound of Daniel lifting up his hands while surrounded by death. organized religion and they will say how can we abandon the Ten Commandments these were the laws that God gave to protect us groups shall raise up be raised up that once protested and said away with the Ten Commandments Away with Christ's words in the schools. God says a movement shall be raised up by these and they shall win. They will say we try to keep him out of the schools. We try to keep him out of education. Out of the legal system. But he came anyway. So yes, I want you to clap your hands and give God a shout of praise. America once again walk your streets I'll take this lightly please I'll take the lion nations they will roar Africa will not be stopped it shall be like a roaring lion so be after the prey the power of darkness that has brought them to poverty, violence. Europe, Asia, and Africa shall join forces in a movement that shall bring salvation to many, many millions of lives. China will endeavor to try and come and rise up against this land and against Israel the pact that they wish to make with Iran but there shall be betrayal from Russia that shall make them angry they shall withdraw for there shall be another time and a time and a half a time and again a time that shall be given to the saints of the Most High God the judgment shall be made from the Supreme Justice in favor of the saints of the Most High God not only possess to not only receive but to possess the kingdom of Almighty God lift your hands up and receive your portion in this nation and your nation all over the earth watching me right now raise your hands up and say the name of your nation and make a declaration a great and mighty army is being raised up and salvation shall come deliverance will come 
restoration will come. Restitution will come. voice is gone declaring to the saints to the warriors to the lovers lovers of peace to the lovers of the prince of peace I will not stop prophesying it has been unlocked it has been prepared for you I say come 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 holy one I'm not here to, to politically portray uh, or to lay out what's going to happen. I, all I'm telling you is what I saw, and I'm revealing to you that it's, it's, it's going to be devastating for a time. But, do you notice what he said in that prophecy, the Lord? He said, at this time, when this happens, a judgment will be made by the Supreme Justice in favor of the saints of the Most High God that they'll not only receive, but they will possess the kingdom. Uh, what it means is you'll possess the portion that is due to you at this time. That's what it means. So all these things work on a parallel so that you are, one thing is happening, sin, grace abounds more. S evil, good abounds more. All this stuff happening, war, peace abounds. God has got the exact opposite going now to, 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 to counter this. But let me tell you what else I saw. Now I'm going to really give it to you, so stay with me now. And uh, guys, what I want you to do is to take this portion that we've just shared, and I want you to, to separate that and make that available, people, just to watch that. Not this whole show, just that piece that we're doing now. The betrayer is seated at the table of kings, celebrating with one thing in mind, to destroy God's people. That's what, this is what this is all about. Forget America, forget about cultures and nationalities and politics and religion. It's basically to, to, to destroy God's people. That has been the desire for the enemy throughout history. Right from the beginning, to destroy God's people. He hates God's people. He hates anything God created. And so his, his ultimate goal is to get to God's blood-washed, redeemed, and to get to Israel, God's chosen people of, 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 the, of, the, of the Old Testament. He wants them to be destroyed, annihilated. You are not excluded. My dear bloodwashed friend, you are not excluded. And so America is being focused on right now. Um, Israel is being focused. We know all that stuff. You can go to Jack from MP to hear all the, all the details and all the scriptures. I'm here to tell you about a vision. <coughs> they have one thing in mind. Destroy God's people. At the same table sits the deliverer. In other words, at the table that where this discussion is taking place, there is someone who who has the key to deliverance in this nation. I believe it's a future president. However, we are talking about betrayal. So the Lord spoke to me and told me to dedicate the next 18 months to a special time of fasting and prayer for the nation. Israel and the people of, of God, redeemed by His blood. Why? To preserve God's people. Listen to me. To preserve God's people. What did God send prophets to do? For preservation. And that's what he did. Why is this prophet at this time setting time aside for the next 18 months on a, on a partial fast, uh, abstaining from certain foods, going into my prayer closet for longer periods, because there is something we are going to possess as the people of God, and the hand of the betrayer will be revealed and hanged. Now, I believe that as Jeremiah and other prophets like, da like Daniel carried the burden for Israel or Judah, 
in their day, so God reveals His secrets to His prophets for the purpose of prayer and protection from our enemies. God brought me to this great land, not for my own prosperity only and peace, but to be a covering for the presidents, leaders of the country, and the people of God. Prophets protect. No, I didn't only say this prophet. I said prophets protect. The prophetic word protects you. Hosea, I want to read something to you very quickly. Hosea, and I'll move on and tell you what is going to unfold in the next few weeks and months. Hosea chapter 12, verse 10 says, and verse 12 and 13 says, I have spoken by the prophets, and as a result of it, of speaking by the prophets, have multiplied vision. Do you know what that means? You have vision. And multiplied vision doesn't mean you have two. It means your vision increases. So when a prophet speaks, your vision increases. You can see further. God can show you more. There's an expansion of your vision. So when a, and a prophet speaks, the first thing that happens is there's a multiplication. That's what's happening with you right now. As you listening to me, there's a multiplication that's taking place. Vision is being given to you to see greater and to see further. Okay, so it says... The, he spoke by the prophets and multiplied vision. Then he says, Jacob fled to the country of Syria. Israel served for a spouse. And for a wife, Israel tended sheep. Listen now. Then he says, but by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, Israel was preserved. Now, there's only one prophet that can preserve Israel, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only his prophet, but priest, son of the living God, king of kings, lord of lords. However, he, he has an extension of that on the earth. Remember that through his prophets. I don't believe I'm the only one. Please, for goodness sake. But I'm saying this portion has been given to me at this time. And I believe is as I speak, there will be a multiplication. Not only a vision, but a multiplication in your life. People that are, that are not able to fall pregnant. This is a time. This is a season. You've had kids children sold from your womb. This is a time of multiplication. Again, the prophet is speaking and there is multiplication in your business, your finance. All of that is released at this very moment. As there is a prophetic vision being made known. So prophets bring multiply vision, deliverance, preservation, and, and by the way, economically as well in your life. So you take advantage of that. We, as I'm speaking and God's touching you and you want to be a part of the deliverance and what's taking place, go ahead and give because he's blessing you right now and wants to bless you more. Daniel chapter 10 verse 11 to 13. This is what happens. The angel comes to Daniel and he says, Oh, Daniel, greatly beloved, understand the, understand the words that I speak to you. He says, For I have been sent to you. While he was speaking his word to me, I stood trembling. Do you know that when I saw this vision, I literally stood in my, uh, my office and waves, waves of God's presence came on me and I wept and wept and wept and wept. I just could not stop weeping. I was shaking like this and I suddenly saw the table and I saw these skirts and dresses and I thought, oh my, and then the spirit said, the betrayer is right there in the White House. And I said, God, please, not there, surely. What are you talking about? What do you mean? How can they be so close? Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is that God said to Daniel, the angel said, Daniel, don't fear. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and pray and humble yourself before God, your words were heard. God uses a prophet during a time of crisis to pray and his words are heard by God and the angels that are fighting the princes of Persia and Babylon are, are winning the battle because a prophet is praying and those that are with him that are prophetic and stand with him are praying as well. It's releasing this battle that's raging over the United States of America, raging over the free world, raging of the Israel which God will protect. Excuse me for being passionate, but I saw something and I realized our prayers, my prayers are making a difference. And he said, your words were heard. He said, I, the angel says to, uh, to Daniel, I have come because of your words. But he says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days and I was left alone to fight until Michael joined me. I want you to understand that the vision came to Daniel. Daniel prayed. God heard, battle in the heavenlies, angels fighting, overcome. And they came to Daniel to make him understand. That's how big it is. You say, oh, that wouldn't happen in this day and age. Don't you believe it? That's the biggest lie any religious spirit will get you to believe. They want you to believe that God does not speak today. He does. 
And if you're a blood-washed child of God, I promise you, you will hear his voice. In my vision, I saw betrayal at a table. And there was no doubt that this is speaking of the betrayal of the USA. Our eyes are focused on Iran. Take them off Iran. That's not the issue. That's the problem. We're looking at Iran. And there's a betrayer that's coming from a different source. It's f we are focusing on the wrong one. Oh, you say, Kim, you don't understand. I do, believe me. I've read the news. I've listened to it. Everything is Iran's preparing itself. And yes, go ahead. But the betrayer is someone that can get close. The serpent is in the house. Now listen to me. America has fought great enemies. It's fought a lion, the United Kingdom, Britain. Remember where you came from. Do you remember the battle for you to come to this country so you could have religious freedom. You fought a bear. You know who the bear is. You know the bear is Russia. This has been, and this, this Cold War continues. I want to read you a scripture that will enlighten you so much. It is, the scripture is in Amos. And I'm going to find it for you. Perhaps you can just push my little prompt up so I can see it. Amos, I'll find it. Don't worry, I've got it. Amos chapter 5, verse 18. I already got it here. Amos chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. This is what it says. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Now, try not to take too much notice of that. Just for a moment. For what good is the day of the Lord to you? What he's saying is you're expecting something, but you're not going to get what you're expecting. Okay, that's how the religious always were. The Pharisees were expecting a different Jesus, a different Messiah. The, the Jewish people were expecting a different one. And so he says, you're desiring something that's altogether different. But he gives an explanation here that I believe is appropriate for what's happening today and to explain to you why I believe the serpent is in the house. He says, it will be, this specific day, as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him. So he flees the lion, he overcomes the lion, the next big force is a bear. It's right there, read it, verse 19. And a bear met him. What for? To kill him. But he overcame the bear. And he went into the house, feeling that he was safe. Leaned his hand on the wall. And a serpent bit him. You know why? There was a crack in the wall. There's a crack in the wall of the White Something House. It's as serious as that. What are you saying? Come and t tell us more, Kim. Okay. You want more? I'll give you more. This is how it goes. The serpent bit him, those that were felt safe because they were in the house. But that's where the danger is right now. I'm not going to get in Obama bashing. I'm not going to do that. I have to pray for this president. I don't agree with most of the stuff he's doing. And most of you don't agree with it. And I tell you something, you better pray for him because he is in danger. And of losing his con the control. And, and, I, and, and, and I, that's all I have to say about that. Here's the issue though. The spiritual aspect of it is this. A serpent bit him. We overcame our greatest enemies. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Do you remember how big that was? How great that bear was that tried to overcome this country. And that bear is coming in a different way. Russia is, is, is more subtle than you'll ever believe and they have something something that's going to cause all kinds of chaos and they won't know how it happened it happened because we were not aware of the weapon that they have forget iran iran will be dealt with by the spirit of the lord and by america and israel if they have to and there's already assassination attempts and it will take place that's not what i'm saying i'm saying we our eyes on something else on the wrong on the wrong enemy even though that is an enemy. Don't get me wrong. The, the serpent is in the house. The word serpent that they use is the word pythos or python, which is the word python. So the word divination is pythos, which is derived from the word python. So we're actually speaking about divination. Now don't run off and say, oh, this is getting crazy. It's all spooky demon stuff. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Python... Pythos is the spirit of divination. 
Let's talk about a python just for a second. A python is a non-venomous snake. It kills by squeezing, causing suffocation. It has to get close to its victim before it can do it. So how does it do? It removes the breath from its prey. That's the spirit that is on the White House at this very moment. That's the spirit that is in Washington, D.C. at this very moment. That's the spirit that I'm speaking about. The serpent in the house is actually a pythos spirit, which is a force of divination, which, which is basically how the python works. What does it do? It gets close, has to get close to you before it can suffocate you, removing the breath from the prey. So it literally squeezes its victim to death. That's what I'm talking about. America will overcome from the outside. Oh, but it will not if the enemy gets so close that it can bite in the house. And that's the burden that I have. That's why I shook because I realized it's, it's, it's so obvious to the righteous and to people in this country. But there's so many that are blinded to this Messiah, this Messianic uh, president. Wow. And, 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 and we have to pray. And, and, you know, everybody's doing their thing, you know, trying to get, you know, to get people to understand that this is more than just a Republican or a conservative or a liberal thing. This is m much more dangerous. The python, you must understand, has, has bad eyesight. It doesn't see very well and limited hearing. So it, it uses its forked tongue to detect odors. It has to detect odors. The tongue flicks in and out to collect airborne uh, chemicals and dust. And the more dust, the easier it can detect the victim. Dust speaks of flesh. You will eat the dust. That's what he's speaking about. You have to get close. And the only way you can detect it is by flesh, by non-spiritual affairs going on. And that's what's happening. Pythons swallow their meals starting with the victim's head. Do I sound too dramatic? So, Kim, is you, you're, you're as bad as the guy shouting judgment. I'm just telling you what I saw. This is the nature of divination. The spirit has to get close to you to suffocate you, so it does that by flattery. Now, I don't know if I said any more about that, but let me just go on here. So, there are three things that happen with this spirit. It familiarizes, equalizes, and neutralizes. It has to familiarize, then it puts you on an equal equalizes, and then it neutralizes you. That's what this force is doing. Russia is a serpent. And I saw a handshake, a veil, and then shuffling of feet in a strange way. I wasn't to share this last week, but he said, you can do it now. I saw, and I mentioned a little bit of this, I saw 10 wars, 10 battles taking place over a period of 18 months. These are enemies of Israel, enemies of the USA. And the USA is in the way, United States is in the way of an attack that would destroy Israel. And so there's a cynical plot to come as a friend and then betray. And then the final thing that I saw, and I want you to take note of this, I saw a parchment with the word ecology written on it. I have no understanding of that, but I want you to know that's what I saw. Evil abounds, my dear friend, but grace abounds so much more. God is working. He's working because prophets are standing on the wall watching. And I'm one of them, and I'm proud to be a part of that. And I'm proud to be presenting this to you. News before the pews. During the next 18 months, beginning March 31st, 2010, we will experience one of the greatest windows of opportunity since the turn of the previous century for the advancement and for the kingdom of God. The heavens will dictate the temperature and the atmosphere will be filled with grace. Listen to me, please. In the next 18 months, filled with grace, favor, success, living in wholesomeness. I wrote this all down as he revealed me. Using his power to do good. A time of refreshing to our spirits this whole next period for 18 months. A refreshing to our spirits, constant alertness and sustained dignity. Only God could say these words. Wow. Sustained dignity. How many of you watching me now would like to have sustained dignity? United States of America, how would you, how, 
Would you like to have sustained dignity? I feel the Spirit of the Lord right now. We want sustained dignity. We want sustained dignity. God, I'm praying for this nation. No, I'm seriously praying, Lord God, that you would intervene. That you would protect those that you've placed in leadership, Lord. That's what he wants to do is remove the dignity. Take the dignity away from this nation. We refuse that. We refuse that. In the name of Yeshua. Lord, you have kept your watch over us. And though there be evil in this nation, righteousness shall reign because you are our king. So I give this to you this moment, Lord, that their dignity may return, Lord God. You've already promised it, but remove the hand of the betrayer, Lord God, and expose it. And I thank you for doing that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You know what I love about the prophetic is you get so close to the heart of God. You hear His mind, His thoughts, what He plans to do. You know, you need this on a regular basis. And there are millions of viewers all over the world that experience this twice a week, sometimes even more, at my den. And you can experience it as well. I would love to have you there. All you've got to do is go to kim.tv. We have so much. We have worship. We have songs that come from the heart of God. Prophetic words about things that have not happened yet. That's all we we say to the people welcome to the future and I want you to experience that